Good. Happy Sabbath, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Good. Uh, I can't hear you. One more time. How's everybody doing today? Uh, that is great. We are just about to get started with our Sabbath school song service. But before we do that, I would say a little prayer for us. Bow your heads. Loving Father, we come before you grateful and thankful for another week and for this special service today. We want to give you all the glory today, and we just ask that your angels will sing with us as we offer you every single praise you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our first hymn will be 382, O Day of Rest and Gladness. O day of rest and gladness, O day of joy and light, O balm of care and sadness, most beautiful, most bright, on thee the high and lowly who bend before the lives he is making intercession on our behalf and that's something for us to give thanks for hymn number 251 he lives i serve a risen savior he's in the world today i know that he is living whatever man may say i see And just the time I need him, he's always near. I know that he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along the narrow way. He lives, he lives. To impart, you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care, and though my heart grows weak. Is appearing will come at last, and I know that He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and He talks with me 
along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian, lift up your voice and sing. the glory song. When all oh, my labors and trials are o'er, and I am safe on that beautiful shore, just to be near the dear Lord I adore, will through the ages be glory for me. Oh, that will be glory for me. Glory for me, glory for me, when by His grace I shall look on His face, that will be glory. love him number 183 just before we get into our opening song let me welcome you to Sabbath school this morning good morning how are you did you have a good week did you have a good week yes you didn't sound like you had a good week you're here this morning in your right mind right you are able to come into the house this morning and enjoy freedom of worship, right? Yeah, that's right. And you have a lot to worship about, right? Amen. Well, let me welcome you to Sabbath School this morning, the 23rd day of March. And it is almost unbelievable. Where did the time go? 
What can I tell you? We are nearing home. Yes. We are nearing home. We've gathered on this beautiful Sabbath morning to worship. Over the past 11 weeks, we have been studying the book of Psalms. And this week's lesson is captioned, Worship That Never Ends. And it's against this background that we have chosen the theme, Perpetual Praise. It's a theme that we can all relate, right? We can all relate to this theme, Perpetual Praise. You have something to praise God about this morning? Yes, we do. So whether from the privacy of the bedchamber, as in the case of the psalmist, or from the rocky isolation of Patmos, where the Apostle John was exiled, our prayers ascend unobstructed by geography or location to God. We have chosen to come into his house today. We have gathered in his name to worship him. So let's forget about ourselves. Let us concentrate on him and let us worship him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for the opening hymn. I will sing of Jesus, love, sing of him who first loved me for he left bright worlds above and died on Calvary. Love and let's praise my heart shall give he has died that I might live I will sing his love to me oh the depths of love divine earth or heaven can never know how that sin as dark as scripture reading Psalm 100 and Psalm 104 verse 33 Psalm 100 maybe you should say it with me you should know it but get your Bibles if anything Psalm 100 make a joyful shout to the Lord all you lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. 104 and 33 says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Let us bow our heads to prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks once more for being a good God to us. We are grateful that you have brought us once more through a week, toil, labor, school, and has brought us into your temple to worship you and to praise you. Today, Lord, as we worship you, we 
enter into a Sabbath school lesson which teaches us the true purpose of worship and how we should worship you with, with praise, with songs, with scripture, the words, with our witnesses, and how we go about our daily lives. Help us today to worship you in spirit and in truth, because such a worshiper is what you seek. Bless us now, and may your will be done in our lives. Bless our Sabbath school team, Superintendent Brother Rose, too, as he presents the Sabbath school lesson. Fill us now with your awesome presence, we pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. For those of you who just came in, welcome. And for those who are joining us online, we're happy that you have chosen to worship with us today. And may the blessing of the Lord attend you as you worship. Now, before we go into the Sabbath school lesson review, I want to focus a little on the caption in the week's lesson, Sing a New Song. Sing a New Song. The new song suggests hope. The new song is an experience, it's a lifestyle, it's an experience with God, it's spiritual growth. The new song gives us something to hope for in the future. And if I were to ask you this morning, do you have a new song? And if you had a new song, what would that song be? Your testimony. Oh, praise the Lord, brother. And can I tell you this morning, can I tell you this morning, that if you went into surgery, if you went into surgery, and you had to go back into surgery like three hours after to do the same thing all over again, then you would have a new song this morning. If your vehicle ran off the road, when you and your son were driving and you both fell asleep, and your vehicle ran off the road and was written off, and you were able to open the doors and walk out without a scratch, then you would have a new song this morning. Do you have a new song? Think about it. And uh, I will come back as we focus on perpetual praise and ask you again, what is your new song? as we continue to worship God in the beauty of holiness, we now invite Brother Dwight Rose to take us through the lesson review. Good morning, Sabbath School. Good morning, Church. You know, um, I, I would start with an experience I had yesterday. I went out with some students on a field trip into the cockpit country and into some caves. And for years I've been going out on field trips and I've always been saying, you know, I, I die for the day when I can actually get to see up close a yellow snake or what we call the Jamaican boa. And we were there walking on the road in the cockpit country, just you know, walking along. And I passed the, the, the location of the snake, and then I heard a commotion behind me, and about five or six of the female students stopped. And then there was this loud scream, and I just saw this mob. You know, you can see the image up there, and that is actually the image of the snake that I took. So that's not a Google image that we usually download. This is an experience that I had. So I remember that when we got on the bus this morning, the morning, you know, I prayed before we went on the trip, and I said, you know, God, this is an opportunity for you to show us your glory, for you to demonstrate the beauty of the nature around us to us, and for us to see it up close and personal. Give us a new experience today. And so when the, when the mob ran past me, screaming and hollering, you know, because of the snake, I went, of course, in the direction because they just ran saying, snake, snake, you know. So when I went there, this about six or seven foot snake had coiled up and put himself into the position, a defensive position, one where he could strike. You know, they, they're not venomous. You know, they, they could bite you maybe. Um, their teeth are, are 
tiny and they're really made to grab on to pray and pull them in. And so as I was there looking at this, I was saying, when everyone was there, you know, trembling and worried, me and myself and a few other students, I was saying, praise God. I would love to see another one. And so after we got back to the bus, we drove down to some caves and uh, we went into the cave. And when we came out, on the way out, I was the last person and I heard at the exit of the cave, somebody screaming out, snake, snake. So of course, I got excited again. And when I got there, there was a snake, a, a, another yellow boa that had climbed up into the, the ceiling of the gazebo that was right outside, and it was just there hanging out. And it was, I mean, I got so many pictures yesterday, and I'm still excited about it, but some of the students are terrified. So the question is based on the lesson today, what is your experience? What do you have to praise God for? Would you praise God after seeing I mean, the, the reason that we saw the snake, by the way, and I posted it in one of my um, social media outlets, um, is that one of the students actually stopped and was looking around, and the snake took a strike at her and then started hissing, and that's when she heard it. And when she looked down, everybody looked down and started running. I mean, I would have loved that, by the way. But, you know, for me to have that experience and for me to praise God for that experience means that it's something that I look forward to. It is something that I would love to see, something I would love to experience. And so bringing that into the lesson today where worship never ends, what are you worshiping God for? And let us go to Friday's lesson. And I um, actually wanted to go there because there is a statement there that I was reading, and it actually helps us to understand the problem we have with worship. Although God dwells not in temples made with hands, yet he honors with his presence the assemblies of his people. He has promised that when they come together to seek him, to acknowledge their sins and to pray for one another, he will meet with them by his spirit. But those who assemble to worship him should put away every evil thing. Unless they worship him in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness, their coming together will be of no avail. Of such the Lord declares, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Are you here today to worship God? Are you here today just to sing? I mean, it's, it's easy to sing, you know. There are many of us who know how to sing. I learned how to sing from I was very young. I've been singing from I was maybe three years old or even younger. I've been singing every day. You know, many of us know how to sing. And I've seen, you know, during the song service, there are some who are just on their phones. There are some who are paying attention to something else that is their idol. Some that are worshiping something else and don't realize it. That you are in the very presence of God. You are coming together to have a conversation with God. You're coming together to learn about God. And in God's presence, we have other things that have taken up our attention. Church has become sometimes a very dangerous place to worship God. You're here. Somebody else is distracting you with the way they look. Somebody's hat is in your way. Somebody's wearing something that you don't like. Somebody's wearing something that you love. There's always something to attract the attention. But I should ask the question, did you get up this morning with the, the intention of coming to God, to worship God, or did you come here to come to church? To be a part of the congregation because you're required to do so. Because it's our obligation. What are you here for? So the memory text reads thus. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. That is Psalm 104 verse 33. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. In other words, if you have an experience with God, if you have drawn close to God, if God is in your experience, then there is nothing that should prevent you from praising him. A bad situation, a good situation. And you can remember Job, right? All of us know the story of Job, that his family, his flocks, his herds, his wealth was taken away from him in one day. And it said, what, you know, what did Job do when all of that happened? What did Job do? He praised God and he said, and he worshipped. Now, how many of us have had a very bad day? And at the end of it, we're just so miserable. 
How many of us have used that opportunity in that experience, in experiencing even the power of God in protecting you from some of the things? Because could, he could have been dead. Yes, his whole family was taken away, but he realized in all of this that God is the one in charge and that God is the one with power. So when we realize that God is the one in charge and God is a merciful God and God is a loving God and God cares for us, then we will have no option but to worship him and to praise his name. So go with me to Sunday's lesson. And the question is about where worship is being offered. Now, how many of you understand the concept of the sanctuary? Can anyone tell me what they think the sanctuary has to do with worship? What happens in the sanctuary? What happens in the house of God? That's where God dwells. All right. So he, he actually said to them, let them make me a sanctuary, right? That I may dwell among them. All right. So he's, he's actually putting, even if it's under a tree, that sometimes they would worship, they, they would set up an altar and, 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 and offer sacrifices to God. God would be there. And I should ask you that, that simple question. How many people does it take to worship God in terms of congregation? When we see it in the, the lesson, how many? Okay, so I know when I was reading it, I think many people when they read this, they think that we have to have a big audience like this. And that a congregation means to have a hundred or two hundred or three hundred or a thousand people. But two or three is the bare minimum for it to be a congregation. Have you ever thought about that? That if you come together to draw close to God and it's just two of you. And you are giving praise to God and you're worshiping God and you're bringing glory to his name by your actions. Do you think of that as worship? Or does it have to be here? with more people distracting you. <laughs> yes, question. Um, do we need even two or three? If, if worship, yes. it's going to be a place where God is, yes. where I am with God, yes. it's more than my It doesn't have to be, self, correct. Because the angels are there, yes. God is there, so I can worship God, you know, in my own person, meaning I'm singing, I'm praising, yes. I'm communing with nature, I'm with God. And the angels are there, and they're worshiping, so I have a congregation right there by myself. You, you have, like Job said, he worshipped God when he realized what happened. He himself worshipped God. He himself, yes. yes. And that's where we need to start, by the way. We need to start from that personal connection with God. And then it's easier to worship God, and over here, Jono. It's easier to worship God when the individuals, by the way, that worship with you also are connected to God. It is more difficult to worship God when you have the distraction of individuals who are not connected with God. It's very difficult. Question. The Bible says that our bodies are temples. Yes. So um, I think this worship, this thing about worship begins with the individual. Yes about declaring your heart to God and turning yourself over to him. I, th I think that's where worship starts. So when we come here, then we're all, we should all be in the same position. Yes. So we're giving, um, as a congregation, we're all worshiping together. All right. So, so if I were to put it this way, that you're a part of a choir, you know, there's, there's I remember when I was in college here a while back, um, West Indies College days, and they had this one year when Larnell Harris was coming to sing. And we had to put together a choir. And we put together 100 voices. And I, I, I cannot forget that experience. 100 voices. And we practiced every day. And I remember we were singing. And Larnell Harris came to the Montego Bay concert. And he came early just to see, you know, to hear the choir. And we had someone who was voicing for him while we were practicing so we could sing along. And... I remember when we sang, he came in and he sat down in the, he was just there, he, he and his, his group members, he sat down there and he listened to us. And when we were finished, he got up and he said, you all don't need me. And that, was, that for me was so exciting because we, we put our hearts into it. We were singing from the heart. We weren't just singing because we could sing. 
And I think it, it's different when you have a, a lot of people who are just singing because they can versus individuals who put their heart and soul into that connection with God. And when you're singing, you're actually singing to God. You're not singing to please the crowd. You're not singing to try to make everybody feel nice. You're singing because God is your refuge and strength. You're singing because it is coming from deep inside your soul. Honestly, that experience, had, it, it cannot leave my mind because of the, the connection we had to God in that whole experience. So, I, I just wanted to point out in Sunday's lesson that the main reason for going to the sanctuary was to overcome sin because we would have to confess our sins, right? You know, you had, to, you had to actually kill an animal that you... You're the one who is doing the wrong, you know. You are the one who is in transgression. And because of your transgression, you now have to kill something. And pass on your sin, um, symbolic of Christ. Passing on your sin to Christ. Getting forgiveness for your sin. And the sanctuary, therefore, when you put your hands into the ear... As the, the text is saying here, when, when the psalmist says, you know, raise your hands in the sanctuary, I think many people just think it's about getting up and dancing and carrying on. No, because your sins have been forgiven. How many of us know that experience that we have done something and it, it, you know, it, is, it is in our heart troubling us and you know that you have been forgiven? How many of us know that experience? Yeah, we just assume that, you know, because we're, you know, we're baptized or because we're members of a church that, or because we come to church or because we, we make a lot of noise, it means, no, they, when the heart feels that it has been forgiven and understands that God is the one that has forgiven you, it, it's a whole different experience. And there's, I mean, even if other people are around, you don't care. Because now you are connected to God. Many of us are crowd pleasers, you know, we like to make noise. And we like to make everybody else, you know, uncomfortable. But in reality, when that praise is coming from that forgiveness that we receive for our sins and our transgressions, the sanctuary should be a place of worship. It's quiet in here. <laughs> Monday's lesson. What is that song that you have to sing? I see Auntie Pat over here, and I know she loves to sing, you know. <laughs> I still remember the cherub choir from back in the days. What is the song? And I, I bring to you the story of Moses and the Red Sea. And, and if you remember that, that story, they get there, and Pharaoh is coming, and, and they start fearing and fretting and worrying, and then God puts a division. He puts darkness on their side and light on theirs. And then... He causes the sea to open up. Are you following? And they walk through on dry land. And when they reach the other side and they look back, Pharaoh and his hosts are coming. <laughs> and God looses the bands of the water. And they come in and they, and they pretty much turn everything upside down and they literally kill everyone. Your enemies have been destroyed. So it would be nice if you went with me to Exodus chapter 15 and we would just read maybe the first two verses for the sake of time. Exodus chapter 15. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. If you read the rest of the chapter and you see the women chime in with the timbrel and the instruments, and they start to lift up a refrain to God because they have just experienced God's power. How many of you have written a new song? How many of us have said something based on that experience that we had with God? How many of us? We usually like to sing other people's songs and we share their experience. But I heard it said earlier, what testimony do you have to share? What is it, whether in speech or in poetry or in the words of a song with music, what, what is it? 
that you have to share. I see a hand over here, two hands over here, over here. Right here. You change your mind? Okay. Um, I have this testimony that um, I was, back in 2015, I was a bit um, wobbling in my, in my faith. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I am from a church which, in statue, it's not big, but in membership, it's very huge. Yes. So, um, a church like this, you can actually be there and you're hiding in the congregation. So, I was doing pretty much a bit of that, mm -hmm. you know. But, um, and this, I was on my way home from work. And um, I met in an accident. It's strange because it was almost at home. Mm -hmm. Almost. Pretty. Walking distance. Yes, Murphy's that, Law says accidents happen yeah. closest to home. And I, in the, in the slip, I, I, it's like I blink and the next minute I'm under a, a park trailer, mm -hmm. my vehicle. And my wow. vehicle was total. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working with a cane now. Uh, it's as a result of that. I um, slid forward and the firewall was, you know, coming in. I hit my knee and it broke my hip. Mm -hmm. Strange enough, I was able to exit the vehicle without help. But after I get out of the vehicle, I could not move any further. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody have to, you know, move me. Mm -hmm. And I look back and I... Um, by the way, I, I, I've done three surgeries oh. on it. Mm -hmm. that, just that one little place. But the, the interesting part is that while I was in the hospital, mm -hmm. I was pegged down on the, on, on the bed, you know, on my back. And all I could do is look up. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when you think of all that been happening and all that's flashed before you, you just look on and said, you know, what would have happened if I was to exit this world at the time? And I realized that, hey, I need to shape up, look up. And I made a commitment there. Mm -hmm. God, if you take me through this, then no more playing church. I'll serve you. I'll give you my all. Yes. And that's what I'm doing today. Well, giving him my all ever since. You know, I was on the... A friend sent me a video. I didn't watch all of it, but of a car that crashed on the highway, um, I think, since this week. Yes. Um, and it, 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 it ignited in flames. And I think one person was able to come out, and he was on fire. And his skin was... Was I, melting I, I off the and, and the other people in there I believe burnt up in the fire yeah. so when we see those things happening around us yeah. you, you know even when we see that we should also give thanks to God because yes. sometimes we, we always give thanks when we maybe have ourselves gone through but when we see other things happening yes. around us we should praise God and give praise to his name for what is happening because of his wonderful works and you know, you know my brother mm -hmm. I've yes. seen you know accident which mm -hmm. The vehicle is not half as damaged as the way mine was. Yeah. And th those persons are no longer here. But I'm still here. Amen. There's a lot to give God thanks for. That is mine. Thank yes. you for your testimony. Tuesday's lesson. <laughs> Who are the people worthy of worshiping in God's presence? You know, I tend to, I think most of us tend to think that, you know, once, you, as was said by my sister earlier, once you're baptized, you know, you're a member of the church, you know, we, we just tend to just think of ourselves as going through the formality because I am a part of something, then I have a right. But what about your connection with God? Is that right? Is that connection there? Because it talks about the heart and being made perfect, and being holy. How many of us can attest to being holy today? 
I'm not going to ask you to put up your hands. Don't even know if I can put up mine. Because in reality, I don't think many of us have really and truly experienced that awesomeness of being in God's presence. Because there's so much fear, so much trepidation, because there's so much in our lives that needs work. But that is why God has sent His Spirit. Isn't that why? To bring us closer to Him. And in order for that to happen, he has to burn out all of those wrong tendencies. And yes, my brother, it takes sometimes bad things happening for it to turn the tide. Because many of us are just living and enjoying life. Getting up every day and just confident because we're alive. There's a point over here. So the, the answer that I would have, what does it mean to be holy? It means that you are led by the Spirit of God, that the, the, the God is active in your life. It is not your doing. You cannot achieve holiness by just doing things. It has to be that God is the one manifesting himself and his power in your life. That is the only way to achieve transformation. Point here. Thank you so much. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Now, looking at the question, Lord... Who may abide in your tabernacle? Yes. The Bible tells us, Jesus Christ himself, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners yes. to repentance. Yes. When we do come to God, we come in an unrighteous state. But when we allow the Spirit of God to work in and through us, yes. he keeps us in a righteous state. So we come to be transformed. And when we are transformed, we have no other thing to do but to abide. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the, the Almighty. So we must first spend time with God in order to be in that place where we're always in connection with Him and worshiping Him and praising Him. Any other questions? We're going to move to Wednesday's lesson. I'm trying to be um, vigilant in moving things. Declare his glory among the nations. I, I, what manifold aspects of worship are mentioned in Psalm chapter 96? And it, it starts out again with the concept of a new song. But, you know, when I was reading through, I saw several statements made by the, the author of the lesson that drew my attention. The, the second paragraph, it says, singing, it says, yet singing, praising, bringing gifts, and proclaiming the gospel are not separate actions, but are varied expressions of worship. <clears throat> For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Now, how many of you have seen, you know, Revelation chapter 14, which is the last statement there, verses 6 to 12. But most of us know verse 6 to 7 by heart because we, we say it a lot, right? So, um, when it says, fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. Many of us kind of read that and we jump straight to worship him that made heaven and earth, right? You know, we like to talk about the Sabbath. And we like to talk about that experience of the Sabbath. But what about the fear of God? What then does it mean to fear God? <laughs> Just love him for his goodness? <laughs> okay. Well, if you think about him, about it, when he brought them out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, he started the Ten Commandments with these words. And the Lord God, the Lord spake all these words, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Are you, are you following? And based on that experience that you just had, <laughs> thou shalt have no other gods before me. Are you seeing that, 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 that this knowledge that we have of God is an experiential knowledge of God? Is that a point? You have a point or... The knowledge that we have of God is experiential. 
And he starts with the premise that I brought you through something dramatic so you could see my power, so you could know how awesome I am. And based on that, it boils fear God. down to love. Yes. There's no way I'm going to obey unless I love you. So you have to love the person to obey the person. So it yes. boils right down to love. But it still means that you must have an experience. Yeah, because many of us use the word love casually. You know, I love this person. I love even, yes, divorce is, is at its height in the church with people who say they loved. And that is why I'm actually putting forward there is an experience with God that transforms the heart, that brings out true love. Yes. But I, I have to, I'm sorry that I have to use the word true love because the way we use the term is misguided. Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. Love is not pop, puffed up. It is, it is something that, <laughs> that many of us need and don't have. It, there was a point over here. Looking at the word fear. When Peter got to know God yes. a little better, the first thing he said was, depart from me because I am a sinful man. Yes. The word fear goes with the words awe, wonder, overwhelming. <clears throat> Moses' first introduction to God was, take off your shoes from off your feet. God is not common. <clears throat> God is way above, far above, awe-striking. And if we think of the word mm -hmm. awe-striking, yes. um, <clears throat> usually when you encounter the supernatural people, drop on their face, drop as if dead. Think about Paul. Think about the angels, sorry, the soldiers who mm -hmm. met one angel who rolled away the stone when Jesus was risen. So this, it is this overwhelming wonder that encompasses fear so that we see unworthiness like Peter who said, depart from me. So we see nothingness. So I think it's a lot more... It's, it's not just love. Mm -hmm. It's when we see the big difference between God and humanity and how unworthily we match up to this supernatural being. Love comes in now when we realize how much he has done for us. I mean, I am the God who brought you out of all these circumstances. Yes. And how he reaches down to us so condescendingly. But fear is so much more surpassing. I, I would say it's one big outstanding emotion that it's very hard to dis define. Well, I actually, I actually have it summarized in this way. Fear goes two ways. If you love God and you keep his commandments, then you have no problem with God. But if you're doing, if you're practicing sin and living in iniquity, you should be <laughs> concerned about God and his, his mercy and his justice and his righteousness. All right? The second point is in the lesson, and it says, um, in the same psalm, it says, Show forth his salvation from day to day. You must demonstrate, if you say you are God's child, if you say you're one of his, then you must demonstrate him. Because when people see you, <laughs> and they don't see him, but you say you're his, then they, then they speak negatively about him. So, give glory to him is the next statement. Fear God, give glory to him. And then the next thing is judgment. That's all in the psalm here. That, that if you are not, if you are connected with God, are you worried about judgment? You know, I have students, I just, yeah, I'll, I'll get to you. Just, I have students that anytime you say test, they start to tremble. And there's one, there, there's always that one in the class who will come to you and say, Sir, when are we getting the next test? What's the difference? One is unprepared. One hasn't put in the effort, and the other one is listening and, and spending time connecting, and so when the time comes for judgment, they're ready. What are you waiting for? Bring it on. Point. You mentioned earlier that um, keep the commandments. Yes. And he went on to say, if you love me, yes. keep my commandments. Love exceeds everything everything for God so love the yes. world uh -huh. there's nothing exceeds God's love 
but it nothing. Has, but we have to see it nothing. manifested and demonstrated. And it's, it's demonstrated through so. his power and it's demonstrated through us when we reflect Christ. As my sister says yes. earlier, the Holy Spirit guides us yes. and directs us to him. And when we spend time with his word, he keeps us there. He won't hold us. We have to spend time with him, want to know more of him. And by doing that, we go to love him more and everything falls in place. And love there, covers And therefore, if you love God and you're in his presence and you're currently searching and, and scrolling through your phone for the, the, the newest piece of information that's out there and there's billions of stuff ready to keep your attention, then who is your God? Is it the one that made the heavens and the earth? Is it the one that has demonstrated his power? Is, this, is it the one that shows his love toward us? Or is it TikTok and Google and YouTube and, and the rest of, of the enemies of God that are out there putting out content to keep your attention? Who is keeping your attention today? Who do you worship today? Who are you praising today? The influencer on social media? Who has held your attention or the God who has all power to do anything and there is nothing impossible with him who has your attention today a point that struck me as I thought about fearing God when angels come before God we know that they veil their faces right yes um, I think I believe it's a seraphim two wings cover their face two cover their body and with two they fly when human beings come before God, <clears throat> we have a problem, and I'm trying to say this as carefully as possible, where we have to tell people how to dress. You know, maybe no sleeveless, maybe no short this, maybe no tight this. Do you understand the difference? Holy beings, pure beings, who understand, cover themselves. Adam, when he realized that he had sinned, he went and covered himself with leaves. People who don't fear God come anyhow, anyway, with the popular saying, come as you are. It doesn't matter how, if you are properly dressed, where the holy beings, not even their face, mm -hmm. and they bow down and they, um, Peter would say, depart from me because I am a sinful man. I remember one brother many years ago I was in college he says you know sometimes I come I get up in private worship and I realize that my shorts too short that I have on and I put on a proper long pants mm -hmm. because I'm coming before God in private worship one day I had an experience just the other day I got a political shirt it's the material is lovely, but it has a politician's face on it. Mm -hmm. I wear it because it is such a nice material. I think they know what they're doing when they selected that material. Mm -hmm. And I came to worship and I said, no, I have to take off this shirt in worship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, my, my mother used to travel a lot. She's now deceased. But every time she traveled, and she would call me and say, she's coming back. And I went to the airport. To wait for her, usually Montego Bay Airport, Sangster. I would know what to look for. Because when my mother came back, she always would wear something new. And bright. And colorful. And some, some hat that she found. And you know, if I, were, if I were to see a crowd and I saw a hat bobbing, I'd say, oh, <laughs> that's, that's my mom right over there. That, you know, that, is, that, that experience of looking forward to that relationship, that connection to God, is what many of us should have. I mean, you should come here expecting. But unfortunately, the, the individuals who deliver the message themselves are a distraction. You know, it might be that the pastor's pants is too tight. Or the skirt too short, as you're saying. That, that we don't realize that, that sometimes our very demeanor of, of doing things is contrary to God. Um, Recently, I... Or some time ago, I went to the, the embassy, the Cayman embassy. And uh, while we were there, a white lady came to the door. Mm -hmm. But she had on a sleeveless blouse. Mm -hmm. And the security said, ma'am, 
I'm so sorry, but you are not able to come inside dressed like this. She just turned to him and said, um, is there somewhere I could get a t-shirt or so to buy? And she showed him. We go to the hospital and we realize that there is a dress code. We go to the courthouse and there is a dress code. And I believe that God is dishonored many times when we take his presence for granted. We must realize that we are coming before a holy God, a righteous God. And if we can observe the dress code in these secular places, how much more as God's children we should take into consideration our dress code in the presence of God. And I must, I must, I must, there's a point over here. I must, I must actually add here that, and there's one, so one here and then one there. I must actually add here that, that in reality, the transformation that happens within the heart, that, that is what changes what we do. And, and the, the mere fact that we are who we are and we behave in the way that we do has a lot to do with our relationship with God. Because many of, for many of us, our liberty is somebody else's problem. Um, I've been a nurse for um, a, a lot of years. Yes. And um, you know, when you work within the healthcare um, industry and you enter into a, a sick, you know, a patient's room, you know, you may be doing something to them that's unpleasant but necessary. Yes. Right. Um, but when you go into a room to give aid and that patient that's sick lift you to a place where you kind of have to wonder, you know, because they're lifting you up more than how you're helping them. So I'm thinking back then to, to Job, and I'm thinking about Daniel and his friends. If your relationship with God is right. It doesn't matter what anybody else will have to say. It doesn't matter what will happen to you. So you can be going through some really rough and terrible times and things don't have to be great. But because your connection with him is of such that you can say like Job, even if he slay me, I'm yes. going to trust him. You can say like the Hebrew boys, you know what? I don't care what you want to do to me, King, but I'm not going to worship your idols. I'm going to serve the God who we know. So it's a relationship, love relationship connection that have to be there with us all, with our creator. All right. So while you carry the mic over there, I think it's... Um, yes. Um, it's Thursday's lesson and in, in bringing this down to the, its end. Um, it's easy to fall into ritual. It's easy to just get up and do the same thing over and over and over again. I, honestly, the thing that stresses me the most in teaching is that I try to, to find a new experience, even in the content that I am sharing every year. There must be something that I can learn. There must be something new. Sabbath greetings. Um, you actually mentioned it, but I wanted to get back to the point where you started the, the entire study yes. by looking at the admonition that the people drew nigh to God with their lips, yes. but the heart. So the, the, the entire focus that we're talking about is that there must be that heart connection. When the heart is right, the clothes will be right. The speech will be right. The, the, the obedience to every law and testament will be right. Amen. So what we must be hungering and thirsting after now is to have a heart like Christ. And the only way we can do that is if we come into true relationship with him. And what is he said to come into relationship with me? Come, reason with me. We have to spend time in his word. We have to spend time praying. And, and when we get into that closeness with God, yes. he is the one that's going to take away all the things that are negative. Because we of ourselves don't know how. So we need to today, from today, make that commitment to really have that relationship with God. Thank you for the study, my brother. All right. Thank you for your contribution. 
I, in wrapping it up, the, the, <laughs> there is a fatal distance between worship and spirituality in the church today. It is made um, evident in how we behave, as, as is being said um, by my brother there and others, that many times we try so hard to force members to change their behavior. It might sound that like that's not what we do, but that's what we do. We try so hard to, to force individuals to, to change their behavior. And in doing that, we, you know, we want them to change. So as soon as they get baptized into the church or if they join my class, you must do what I say or else this, 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 this attitude of not allowing God to do his work. One waters, one plants, but God is the one who brings the, the increase. The Holy Spirit, that God, and the Holy then, Spirit. Well, it's still God. God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus, who is God. And God, the Father, who is God. All of them work together to bring us closer to them through Christ, through the work of the Holy Spirit. It is God. Point. Thank you, my brother. I agree with every point made here, but there's something we all need to remember. I think we know it all, but we should remember it. Just like physical maturity, the same with spiritual maturity. Some person mature before some in some areas. Therefore, it behooves us to be careful how we speak about how we dress, how we look, how we even speak. Because if I'm tight or short, that doesn't mean I don't fear God. It means that my dress code is not there. I'm there with, I'm there with it with my speech or something else. Mm. We are to be careful. As you said earlier, you speak, he water, and somebody did increase. We just need to pray for each other and leave everything to the Holy Spirit. We are to be careful. And do the work that we have to do. And so um, I, 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 I was looking at the concept of offering sacrifices um, and... I'll come to you. Where, why are we offering sacrifices? A, a church brother pulled me aside last Sabbath and he was saying, you know, he's concerned about this thing with tithing and whatever and somebody showed him something. And, you know, and I said to him, I said, tell me something. Do you have a problem with giving taxes to the government as much as they are corrupt? Whether GLP or PNP, I don't take sides. I said, do you, do you have a problem with returning your taxes? Yes, you mumble, but you drive on nice roads because there's taxes for the roads to be fixed. They need some fixing, but yes. You know, my road after the election, all of a sudden, I, w I drove in on bad road <laughs> the day of the election, and the following day, I was driving on smooth road out. I don't know who paid their taxes, different than I. But I said, well, you have no problem rendering to Caesar when Caesar requires, but all of a sudden when God says, you find all kinds of loopholes and stuff. This is the same experience of worshiping God. Because when we give to God, it must come from the heart. My sister. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, with dress, dress code and all of that in the church, I believe that because when I get baptized, mm -hmm. I used to wear, you know, things that wasn't lookable. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I get baptized, I mean, the Holy Spirit keep on telling me if I put on something to go to church that, you know, don't lookable, always says no. I, I hear the Spirit speak to me and say, mm -hmm. you cannot go with that. So oh, I don't know if, I mean, when you're baptized and God, you know, your Holy Spirit come to you and can teach you things, I don't know if it's only me hear that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to understand, you know? Yes. Because that we, we must grow in Christ. Yes. We must grow in his word. We must grow in an understanding of what he requires of us. And yes, that sir. means that there must be a transformation in our lifestyle. Yes. There must be a transformation in our word. So I leave you with the question that is in the lesson. How 
can we make sure that we as Adventists, and I should also say Christians and those who believe in God, with all this light and knowledge, how can we be sure that we don't fall into the trap of thinking that merely knowing truth and going through the rituals of truth is enough? And I have just one answer here. Oh, there's a point there. I have just one answer here. We must repent and be converted. Going to church doesn't mean you're converted. Going to church just means you're in the right place. Yes. Final All right, point. So going back to what you were saying earlier about your relationship with Christ, I think to fully surrender your all, you cannot be carnal minded and spiritual minded. Yes. You have to be spiritually completely because if you're spiritual minded and carnal minded, the co you being carnal will take more dominance. So you have to ensure that you're spiritually grounded and rooted in Christ. And there are so many distractions. And our mind, our minds are our biggest distraction. So you have to feed your mind on the things of God and not on the things of the world so that you can surrender all. Because even when you're praying, yes. you're being distracted. So, yeah, mentally, you have to sort that out to be fully connected with Christ. And we have to realize that in our own strength, we have no power to overcome. So, turn with me to hymn number 99, because I was asked to at least share a song. Hymn number 99, and we'll just sing the first verse. God will take care of you. And how many of us know that song? Hymn number 99. Mm. Mm -hmm. I probably started too low. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Five minutes, really? Well, okay. <laughs> well, since I have time, I thought I was, I was making sure to wrap things up. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so going back to Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 7, that in, that in that context of drawing closer to God, that first angel's message gives us this, first, we must fear God. In other words, we must recognize who God is and realize how awesome God is. We have to realize his power in our lives. We have to see him working and demonstrate it around us. And that is why our lives must reflect Christ. Second Peter talks about this, you know, in terms of being the royal priesthood, the holy nation, that we should show, show forth his praises, right? All, the reason for knowing all of this truth and being transformed by it is so that we can reflect Christ to the world. We can reflect Christ to others. And, and because we have just been so used to the ritual and practice of Christianity, where we come through things daily, every day, just doing the same thing over and over, we, we tend to think that that is enough. So the, the transformation of fearing God, and then in, through that experience of knowing how awesome He is, giving glory to Him in your life, and then being judged by him because if, if God, David said he had no fear of God's judgment because he knew that God was merciful. And because of that experience, you will endeavor to keep the Sabbath day holy. You will endeavor to worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you for your participation. Today you have been a wonderful congregation.
Great morning and happy Sabbath, church. Testing for sound and clarity. Great morning and happy Sabbath, church. Has God been good to you this week? Oh my goodness, the hymn safely through another week has really had a different meaning for me this week. God has been so wonderful to us. Amen. And today I am so happy to welcome every single one of you here this morning into the house of the Lord, right here at the Seventh-day Adventist Church here at Northern Caribbean University. Now, what did you bring with you to worship this morning? Other than the offering, what did you take with you today? Praise. Oh my goodness. How many of us were able to identify at least three songs in our Sabbath school lessons? Like you saw the title and you were able to sing about three different songs in our lesson today, in our lesson this week. Anybody? Two of us. Church, we have to do better than that because you see, when we get to the kingdom, what was that, Pastor? Oh, it's still a few. I counted about six hands raised. Oh my goodness. Church, this is what I want you to do. Oh, and there is one more on this side. I can't hug everybody. So I want you, my hands aren't long enough. So I want you, Auntie Naz, and everybody, and all my children, turn to the person right beside you, to the left, to the right, and say, I can't wait to see you in the kingdom. Yes, and then you give them a nice smile and a warm hug if you can. I can't wait. Look to the ones behind you and in front of you. I can't wait to see you in the kingdom where worship will never end. Yes, and then give them a nice Bible verse or a song that resonated with you this week in relation to the Sabbath school lesson. I don't see a move in church. Let me see a move. Let me see a move. We spoke a little about communal worship in our lesson this week. We're going to have to interact and engage with those when we go to heaven. You think you're going to be by yourself up there? All of us are going to be there. Amen. Oh my goodness. Let us continue to bask in the wonderful presence of the Lord today. And I wish for each and every one of you a very spirit-filled, blessed, and holy Sabbath. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Elder Rose, for so ably doing the lesson review for us and for reinforcing those nuggets of truth. And thank you, Sister Shelley. You see, nothing should stop your praise. She is hoarse, voice partially gone, but nothing is stopping your praise. Have you found your song this morning? Earlier I asked you, if I were to ask you to sing a new song, what would that song be? Have you identified your song this morning? I trust you have. I now invite Sister Maisha McPherson to share her song with us.
And if you bear his name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. We'll sing the song forever and amen. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cry. Your name stands above them all. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them, stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your We have studied this week the various modes of worship. May we, as we go throughout this week and the remainder of our lives, may we develop a deeper connection with Christ. May your worship be deliberate as we worship him in the spirit and in truth. May we find a new song and may or praise be continuous, even as we continue to focus on perpetual praise. May I invite you to stand as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you this morning for having been able to come into your sanctuary to worship. And we are able to do so, Lord, because we still enjoy freedom of worship. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings, and we ascribe majesty and power to your name because you are God, and there is none like you. Unworthy though we are, we present ourselves and ask you, Lord, to empty us daily. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and use us as vessels of honor, we pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. Do continue to enjoy the Sabbath, and let us continue to worship God in the beauty of holiness.
darkness came the light out of nothingness you made life for before the world you were bless your name forevermore then into the world you came by the power of your name and you washed my sins away bless your name forevermore lord according to your plan you created every man just to glorify you and bless your name forevermore i will bless your Our God who inhabits our praise, with adoration we have come, for this is the best way we can express your goodness and your provisions for your children, especially during this past week. We ask that you will place within our hearts that will and that desire to praise you even as you join us in worship, lift our hearts and our thoughts heavenward. To this end, we thank you for blessing, for hearing, and for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name.
Good morning, brothers and sisters, and happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. The task is mine to welcome you to this very special service this morning. I am very happy to be here. I don't know about you, I heard a very weak amen, but I don't know about you. I have had a very rough week, and I am happy to be in the house of the Lord where I can forget about everything and not feel guilty. Can I get an amen, those students who have those assignments? Yes. You don't have to feel guilty as you come to the house of the Lord today. First, I'd like to welcome those who are visiting with us. And I do have a few names. Cindy Gale. If you are here, Cindy, just wave your hand so I can see, so we can see you. Maybe on the outside right now, but we welcome Cindy. H. Ellis. Not seeing H. Ellis. Maybe on the outside as well. Richard White. From Andrews. Okay, from Andrews Memorial SDA. We are happy to have you, Carmen Ellington. Where? Okay, there you are. The lights are causing it to be a little difficult to see you, but God sees you. Samia Black, or Sanya Black from the Mandeville SDA Church. Where are you? All right, I see you. God bless you. Welcome. Kenesha Anderson from Lawrence Tavern SDA Church. Where are you, Kenesha? Over that side, all right, I see you. God bless you. Welcome. Um, Carlton, I'm not sure what this last name is. Plates, is that it? Carlton and Judy, where are you? All right, we are happy to have you here with us this morning. Christine Payne. Are you here? Is that the right name? Payne, Christine? We are so happy to have you here, all of you who have signed up. And I'm sure there are others who did not sign up, but we are happy that you have chosen to be with us today. We know that there is a special blessing in store for you. Now, I also want to mention that we have Sister Celestine Thomas. She's one of our shutting members. Sister Thomas, where are you? Amen. Very happy to see you, Sister Thomas. Very happy to have you. And you will see more of her a little later on. Amen. We have also with us visiting the project manager for our church complex, Elder Desmond Young. Please, sir, give us a wave. Where are you? I see you over there. Happy to have you. Welcome, and may your heart be blessed today. We also have Dr. Hilton visiting with us. Dr. Hilton, are you here? Dr. Pastor Hilton? Maybe he's on the outside. I did see him on the outside. I'm not sure if he came in, but we are so happy to have you join us today. I also want to give a very special welcome to our children. All the children that are in the congregation, please give us a wave. I want to see you wave, Jeremiah. All right, wave, wave, wave. Good, good. Want to welcome all the children in the service today. We are happy to have you, and you'll be hearing from some children here on the platform to my right, and I'm sure your heart will be blessed. Also, I want to mention that I see in the congregation Pastor Ronnie Henry and his dear wife, Auntie Pat. We are happy to have you. Welcome to our service today. May God bless you. To our regular members, what would church be without you? We are happy to have you come week after week. Even when the holidays set in and others have gone, you are here. We are happy to have you, and we thank you for coming. Now, there are also persons who are watching online. We welcome you to our service this morning, and we are happy that there is a special message for you. So stick with us, and you will get that message. 
I also want to give a very special welcome to brother and sister campus who told me that they always watch the church service here even though they are unable to come out they always watch so brother and sister campus welcome we are happy to have you and God bless you brother nation also watches and so we are happy to have you brother nation God bless you and we look forward to a time when we can have you with us face to face again now we're going to look at or move into the collecting of the gifts that you have for the building of the temple in Exodus 20 verse 8 it says and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them and so I know that you have a special offering to contribute to the building of the church complex where we can worship I am looking I'm not seeing the children in place okay they are coming so they'll be waiting on you and I'm going to ask that the jingle be played at this time so that the gifts that you have brought can be collected All right, let's. It's coming, the jingle, it's coming, it's coming. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Oh, oh, building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Oh, we are building up an holy temple for the Lord. Set apart It's gonna be a house of praises Filled with Jesus in our hearts Oh, brother want to help us Sister want to help us Building up the temple of the Lord Oh, oh brother want to help us Sister want to help us Building up the temple of the Lord Oh, oh all right we thank you so much for your wonderful gifts we are still collecting so let's have the jingle go once more as you continue to give Thank you so much for giving from your heart now there are a few reminders that I need to share with you as coming from the pastor's office and so I ask you to pay attention to them board members please be reminded that our monthly board meeting will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. on zoom Please make every effort to be there. Also, our church services will continue next week and will be at the church complex. Also reminding you of our weekly Sunday night and Wednesday night meetings and encourage you to come on out and be blessed. And I have to 
remind you of our 40 days of prayer that we have embarked upon. And today we are at day number 23, and it has been a blessing. God has answered many prayers through this program. Many individuals have even sometimes had their prayers answered right there online during the service. And so it's a wonderful thing. I thought I would hear a big amen for that. Because God works, brothers and sisters. And when we pray, it brings us closer to him and he blesses us. So I encourage you to come on out to our 40 days of prayer. Join us and receive the blessing that God has for you. Let us continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones. Sister Dowdy, Sister Tapper, Sister Henry, Brother Denton and Colin Sinclair. Let us keep them in our prayers. Aunt Vi, thank you. Aunt Vi, let us keep them in, in our prayers and remember that they need our support. I have to share with you that when an old member of this church passed away, Pastor Milford, and I spoke to Sister Milford about it this morning. So, Sister Milford, this is what I was talking about. And that day, he passed suddenly, and that day, she was at home and people were visiting. And the day just slowly trudged along. But someone came by to visit, and that, that person just decided to just jump in her kitchen without permission and just cook up something. And it was only when the meal was ready that she realized she had not eaten since morning. And so, brothers and sisters, it is important for us to support those who have lost loved ones because they need our support. This morning, our program will flow a little different from the usual, as you have already noticed. It will be led by the Department of Music and Fine Arts as they present a service of meditation featuring the cantata, The Seven Last Words of Christ. I know that there will be a blessing in store for each one of us as they take us through this program. We will have a short charge by our pastor, Pastor Joel Hay, a man who has many talents, who loves the Lord, whose smile is contagious. And if you don't get infected, he will spring out a rhyme or two and then you must smile. A man who is married to one wife and the father of three young men. Pastor Hay loves the Lord and dedicates his life to God's service. He's not only good with spiritual things, but he's also a farmer and could be a consultant in that area, especially as it relates to planting yams. So if you need some advice with farming, you can talk to Pastor Hay. He is the one that will give us the charge today. And I know God will speak through him to us to uplift and strengthen us as we go along. Before he speaks, we will have a very special item that will come from our children's choir. God bless you. May your hearts be blessed and welcome again.
the children are singing it and I believe it we will go forth in grace alone happy Sabbath to my brothers and sisters happy Sabbath to my brothers and sisters I trust that your week was quite productive and during these sacred hours we are going to use them just to magnify the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I join with Elder Miller to extend welcome to all of you, those in this immediate gymnatorium and those who are joining us by way of the social media platforms. We are happy to see you Dr. Hilton, we are so grateful that you have joined us. Elder Young, traveling all the way from Meadowvale in Kingston to share in this very meaningful worship. We welcome those who are visiting with us and we praise God for your presence. He was traveling during Wednesday of this week. His appointment was for 8.30. Upon reaching the Spanish Town Road, just in the area or vicinity of Six Mile, there was a great traffic congestion. Yes, the vehicle traffic was just inching its way forward. But there he remembered quite well a simple little navigation platform provided through Google that is called Ways navigation and live traffic. So he plugged it in while I'm in the song, I am trusting the Lord Jesus, trusting only thee, trusting thee for full salvation, great and free. I am trusting thee to guide me, thou alone shalt lead, every day and o'er supplying all my needs. Jesus Christ, he is the way. Shall we bow as we pray? We open your words, Lord Jesus, please. Open our hearts and speak now, for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Ways Navigation, that's the name, W-A-Z-E, and Live Traffic. The person who sent it declares that even if police officers are ahead of you, they will be identified. He was not driving fast, but he was trying to find, as it were, the shortest path that leads to the Seventh-day Adventist church halfway tree. As he plugged it in, he discovered that it says, you will reach halfway three at 8.30. His appointment was 8.30. Ways took him through Henley Street and towards Penn Cook Seventh-day Adventist Church and down to Moline's Road and then to Halfway Tree, he reached the appointment before the designated time. But today he credits 
most of all Jesus Christ who declares in St. John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And the prophet Isaiah captures this moment as he reiterates these very important words in Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 8. He says, come with me, and a highway shall be theirs, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. In verse 9, the Bible says, No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and Everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and the sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The Bible highlights to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that the first Adam came and the first Adam failed, but the second Adam came and he has been victorious. The church is not hearing me. The first Adam came and the first Adam failed. But the second Adam came and he has been victorious. For the first Adam took sin on him and there was sin in him. But the second Adam came, he took our sins on him, yet there was no sin in him. The first Adam came, and in accepting him as Lord and Savior, the baker says, he is the bread of life. The carpenter says, he is the door. The student says, he is the teacher. The sick and diseased say, he is the mighty healer. The thirsty says, he is the spring of living water. The starter says, he is the finisher. Peter says, he is the Christ. Mrs. Pilate says, he is the innocent man. Yes, he's still the miracle-working Lord. He is the forgiven Savior. And today, my brothers and sisters, he wants to be your loving Savior. Will you let him in? Yes. In his seven last words, what captivates and captures my attention most is to test a lie. It is finished. Yes, to the Greek, to test a lie. It is finished. To the Spanish, Timonar una oracion. To the friends, Sifene, it's finished. It's finished. It's complete. All you need to do is to accept him today. And that which he has started in your life, he will see it to its completion. Because he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Accept him today and your life will never be the same again.
It is Friday. About the sixth hour, according to the SDA Bible commentary, about noon. It is the hour of darkness. As our Lord suffers on the cross, darkness literally comes over the old land. Figuratively, the old world has dwelt in the darkness of sin and death since the fall of Adam and Eve. There on the cross, Jesus enters into full encounter with that darkness. Our darkness. He took on himself the darkness of our sin, yours and mine, and suffered there on the cross in our stead. Yet, as he hung on the cross, he speaks words, seven last words that reveal his graciousness, his humanity, his confidence that his sacrifice as our substitute is complete. And they point to the triumph he brings. Thus, we hang on his every word, for his words bring life out of death, triumph after suffering, and hope for eternity.
and the people clamored, he is death guilty. Take him, let us crucify him. Be his blood on us and on our children. Then they did crucify Jesus and the two thieves, one on his right hand and the other at his left hand. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Thank you. 
It makes sense that the first word of Jesus from the cross is a word of forgiveness. That's the point of the cross. After all, Jesus is dying so that we might be forgiven of our sins, so that we might be reconciled to God for eternity. Do you really believe God has forgiven our sins? Do we take time on a regular basis to confess our sins so that we might enjoy the freedom of forgiveness? Do we need to experience God's forgiveness in a fresh way today? As the thief on the cross said, Hear me, O Lord, and remember me when thou come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, Verily I say today, Thou shalt be in paradise with me. Amen. So I tell thee.
though our situation may be quite different to that of the criminal on the cross who cried out to Jesus, we are nevertheless quite like him, sinful and in need of God's grace and mercy. May we today put our ultimate trust in him so that when Christ comes again, we will be with him in paradise. And Jesus said, See, O woman, here behold thy son, beloved.
even as Jesus was dying on the cross as the Savior of the world, he was also a son, a role he didn't neglect in his last moments. He wanted to make sure his mother would be in good hands after his death. And so, as a loving son, he was saying to the disciple, Please take care of my mother. All praise be to you, Lord Jesus, fully God and fully human, Savior of the whole world, my Savior, your Savior. God, my Father, why hast thou forsaken me?
when I find thee, I'm crucified. When I find thee, I'm crucified. When I find thee. In the words of the psalmist, Psalm 22 and verse 1, Jesus found a way to express the cry of his heart. Why has God forsaken him? Why did his father turn his back on him in his moment of greatest agony? As we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Imagine, the Father abandoned the Son for our sake, so that I, so that you might not be forsaken by the Father, and together we say, praise God. And Jesus then passing by, all did rail upon him, and wagging their heads, they said unto him, Ah, thou wouldst fain destroy the temple, if thou be Jesus, son of the Father, now from the cross descend thou, that we behold it, and believe on thee when we behold it. If thou art the king over Israel, save thyself then. And Jesus said, I am a thirst.
and passing by him. All did rain upon him, and walk in their heads at him. They said one. If thou 
as we reflect on Jesus' statement, I am thirsty, we can think of our own thirst. Of course, it is nothing like that of Jesus' thirst. Rather, we ought to be thirsty for him. We ought to yearn for the living water that Jesus supplies. Let us rejoice in the fact that he suffered physical thirst on the cross, and so much more, so that our thirst for the water of life might be quenched. Father, into thy hands I commend my soul.
Even as Jesus our Lord once entrusted himself into the hands of the Father, so also ought we to give ourselves to him, to trust him, and to allow him to be our Savior. Let us submit our lives to him full and completely and seek to live for his glory alone. Can we truly say, here I am, Lord, available to you, both now and in the future? And with a loud voice, Jesus cried, exclaiming, it is finished. And he bowed his head and rendered up his spirit. And it was about the sixth hour, and the sun was darkened, and darkness covered the earth until the ninth hour. And the veil of the temple was rent, and all the earth did quake, and the rocks were rent, and all the graves opened wide.
And Jesus said, "It is finished." Surely he was expressing relief that his suffering was over. But the words "It is finished" meant more than that. It is finally done, complete. Jesus had accomplished his mission. The battle had been won. His right hand and his holy arm had gotten him the victory. He had announced and inaugurated the kingdom of God. He had revealed the love and grace of God. He had embodied the love and grace by dying for the sin of the world, thus opening up the way for all to live under the reign of God. Because Jesus finished his work of salvation, you and I don't need to add to it. In fact, we can't. He accomplished what we never could, taken our sin upon himself and given us his life in return. Jesus finished that for which he had been sent, and we are the beneficiaries of his unique effort. Because of what he finished, you and I never finished. We have hope for this life and for eternity. The Bible tells that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from God's love. One day, what God has begun in us will also be finished by His grace. Until that day, may we live in confidence of Jesus, cry of victory, it is finished. Amen. It is now time for us to collect the tithes and the offerings. And I must add at this point, since usually this is done earlier in the program, lest you think we have much further to go, we are almost finished. And so I ask the deacons and deaconesses to stand in place in preparation to collect the tithes and the offerings. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, as you prepare to give your offering today, remember that your gift does not simply disappear into a collection basket or a bag, as the case may be. Instead, it is entrusted to God and used for his purposes. In 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8, one of the most common tithe and offering verses we read, and God can bless you abundantly 
so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your rich bounties upon us, your children. As we prepare to give, we ask, Lord, that you will bless our hearts and that whatever we give will go to the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name, amen. The deacons and deaconesses will wait upon you now for your tithes and offering. For those who are online, there are ways that you can give online or checking account is three two one one five that's scotia bank mandeville or jamaican account number six three three five five eight the church building fund account number it's a u.s account Five zero one nine seven two six five eight. We ask that you will send an email to our treasurer once you have made this deposit online at M Thompson M T H O M P S O N at Jamunion dot O R G so you can indicate how it is to be dispersed. Thank you. 
we give thee but thine own. Please stand. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone, I trust, O Lord, from thee. be seated and at this time we are going to have a very special poem delivered to us by sister Celestine Thomas she's one of our shutting members and so because our church caters to everyone we are going to allow her to sit right where she is as she says her poem for us so you can watch the screen and you will see her enjoy Thank you for this opportunity. Here, so many are taking vacations to the mountains, the lakes, or the sea, where they rest from their cares and their worries. What a wonderful time that must be. But it seems not my lot to be with them. I must toil through the heat and the cold, seeking out the lost sheep on the mountains bringing wanderers back to the fold. But someday I shall take my vacation to the city John tells us about, with its foundation walls all so precious, where from gladness of heart I shall shout. There no sights ever witnessed by mortals can compare with the glories up there. I shall take my vacation with Jesus in the place he went up to prepare. There the weather will always be perfect. Not a cloud shall sweep over the sky. And no earthquake nor cyclone shall threaten in the land of the sweet by and by. Soon there's going to be an excursion. I am booked for a ride in the air. You are invited to share my vacation and the peace with my bridegroom to share. There'll be no place given to smokers. And no card parties there are allowed. All the backbiters, liars, and gossips could not stand such a wonderful crowd. But the old gospel train will be ringing neath the shades with the glorified throng who are on their vacation with Jesus. You're invited to go along. Now, when most people take their vacation, they return to their homes by and by. But when I take my heavenly vacation in my mansion of gold in the sky, I will be with my Savior forever. With him sit on his heavenly throne. All the years will be one long vacation when my Savior takes me to his home. When I take my vacation with Jesus, what a wonderful time that will be, hearing songs by the heavenly chorus. And the face with, of my Savior I'll see, sitting down by the banks of the river, neath the shades of the evergreen tree. I shall rest from my burdens forever. Won't you spend your vacation with me?
tetelestai. It is finished. Termina uno oracion. It is finished. Say for me, it is finished. God has completed his work for us, and today he wants to do it in us and through us. It might have been that he started this work with your consent, but somewhere along the line, that partnership has been broken. And he's still knocking. He wants to complete this work in you. It could have been that you have not yet allowed him to start. And today he wants to do that complete work in you. He says, I'm knocking. I'm standing at your heart's door. I need to come in. Would you let him in? If this is your desire, just type in the chat. Lord, please come in. You're here in this immediate gymnatorium and you want him to complete that work. Just indicate towards heaven, saying, Lord, please come in. Please come in. Heavenly Father, our hands are lifted towards heaven. Our hearts are in tune with the working of your Holy Spirit. It's your desire to complete the work which you have started. And there are others who are now starting. Help them to be confident that you will complete it. And may the God of peace who gives what the world didn't give and cannot take, or all-wise God, be glory, dominion, and power, both now and for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May be seated.
Thank you.